Yesterday, we had a 40-minute transfer special. If you missed it, go check it out. It will fill your lunch break and then some. Today, we are back for the start of Season 3. I left you guys on a cliffhanger. To or not to sign Noah? Well, I'd like to say, welcome Noah. I bought him. I still don't know if this is a good decision or not. Now, let's be real for a second. He is absolutely insane. The former Ren youngster snapped up on a free transfer. He has joined us. He can play the first game of the season. Four hours before kickoff, he's managed to make it to Plymouth. Don't question the logic in it. You can see here he's in the Media Dream 11. He looks amazing. Minor issue. Might be injury prone. Probably should have scouted him before I hit confirm. And that in itself, you know, injury prone, oh, it might not be that bad. Uh, I know why Ren released him. He fractured his spine, his back uh, uh, <laughs> in February. Um, yeah, he broke his back six months ago. I wish I was joking. <sighs> Have I made an error? I don't know what the answer to that question is, but what I do know is today, to start the season, we got a triple header. Two away games as well. Before we get into those, though, let's run that intro. Yes, folks, how is it going? Happy Monday. Welcome back to Park to Prem. As you already know, it's the start of a brand new season. First game of the year is going to be against Plymouth Parkway. Before we get to that, though, for those of you that skipped through last episode or maybe didn't watch it, let's just remind ourselves of the new additions this year. Of course, the headline transfer over the summer was Scott Williams' sale to Blackpool. It is 235k, but he's back on loan for the year. And with some of the reinforcements we've brought in, I think we're in a great little position. First player we signed in pre-season was Ollie Eagle, 18 years old. Versatile centre-back option released by Bournemouth. He, incidentally, if we just look at things, is listed as our hot prospect. So what he lacks in current ability, maybe he has in potential. Johnny Stuttle, another player who has acquired a face since last episode. I updated my face pack and all the faces were in, which was brilliant. This man, another former Bournemouth youngster, one long shots, 14 finishing though. At this level, I think he's going to be a really, really useful player, paying him £60 a week to be an impact sub. He's here for the next two years. And another backup player who's here for the next two years is Cameron Cox. This man can play left back, he can play right back. Earlier on in his career, played some regular minutes in League 2. Coming down a few levels to play with us now, hoping he's going to be a useful squad player for us. We'll be making his debut today in the first match. Tejera is another backup option we brought in, much like the last one. He's going to be playing as well today in the first game because unfortunately Vaughan is still coming back from his broken foot. This guy can play anywhere down the centre of the midfield, defensively or offensively. Has some really nice physicals when it comes to his pace, which is going to make him mobile. And as a squad player... And much like all these other squad players, going to add a little bit of depth that we didn't have last year. And one more depth option to cover before we talk about all the new starting players. Reggie Evans here, 18 years old, released by Southampton, has amazing physicals for this level, is inconsistent, is injury prone. We're going to hope that neither of those things come back to bite us because I think as our third choice centre-back, he could be exceptional. And well, when it comes to new starters, two big earners that we signed last episode, Charlie Osborne, the first, 18 years old, in the Media Dream 11 as a centre-back, a player Tim to have some really, really good potential. When I agreed to sign him, he had League One potential. And now, according to our staff, he has Vanarama National potential. This is why you need scouts that know how to judge potential. And the last of our new additions, Will Merry, a player who I could talk about his potential as well, but we've talked about potential enough. This man is very good right now. You can see, currently, a Vanarama National North or South player. That is the tier above us. 18 years old, amazing physicals, really good technicals. In the Media Dream 11, tipped to be the best player in the league this year. We have single-handedly changed our system to fit him into the team. And just as a little recap, we are changing systems this year. We have some really good attacking midfielders that can't play that deeper, wider midfielder role. It's maybe a little bit of a gamble, but this year we are playing with a short and wide pitch as opposed to just a massive pitch, which we had last year. And with that in mind, and the superior talent I think we have versus other teams in our league, I think this kind of system that maybe leaves us a little bit open at the back is actually a system that's going to work really well. With all the new additions, we are currently tipped to win the league. So no pressure this year. We have got a couple of players on non-promotion release clauses as well. Mary is one of them. Lebret Mabulu is the other. This man has a £54,000 release clause. Worth noting, since he's joined us, estimated value of seventy to 140000 That's not too bad. He's signed a three-year deal. Even if he's injury-prone, if I could flip him on for a few hundred thousand next year like we did with Williams... 
uh, suddenly it looks like a good transfer. Until then, it's undoubtedly a gamble, but if he stays fit, this man could be very, very good. I say man, looking at the picture, he looks like 14. It was taken from Ren's social media, I think in 2021. So apparently he's 16, but I'm going to be honest, he looks about 12. But maybe the baby-faced assassin can come good. He's not had a preseason with us, but he's going to be thrown straight into the deep end. Today's first game of the season against Plymouth Parkway. They're currently in 17th on alphabetical order. Media prediction of 16th. Not sure why I mentioned where they are in the league. It's the first game of the season. With it being an away day, you know what time it is. It's been a while since we had one of these, by which I mean it's been two episodes without one. It's time for a Jack Dozen away day. We are heading to Plymouth Parkway, which if I remember correctly, they play here at the Belifo ground. Very, very exciting. Let's have a look at it in satellite view. Look at that. Next to the cricket club, another pitch next door. And I don't want to get people too excited, but... The road next to the ground has nothing. There's two spots, though, where we can have a look at photo circles. I want to have a look at this ground in all its glory. And here we are. We have a proper camera view of the pitch and the stadium. Is, does that count as a state? I mean, it is technically a stadium. It's a stand. I'm trying to work out if this is some kind of modern day sin bin. Are they planning ahead? Is there a rule change in football coming that I don't know about? There is another camera angle here, which I think is meant to be behind the goal, but the goals aren't up. I mean, it's a little bit blurry, but it looks like prime non-league material. The fact they've got a large fence around the stand and around the pitch to stop the ball going into this marshland, I think should be commendable. Also, what is going on here? I feel like we've uncovered something. Maybe, um, you know what? Not going to question it. Uh, let, let's go to the tactics screen. I, I've... I feel in danger. Right, we're going. We're leaving. Bye. For this first game of the season, here is how we are going to line up. Hopefully, there's not going to be any strange, shady-looking figures behind the goal on match day. Nolan, unfortunately, is suspended. Vaughan is coming back from his broken foot. As a result, Cox and Tejera will probably ordinarily be on the bench. They start for us today. The new attacking system on full display. Atkinson finally making his debut, having signed towards the end of last season, but being unable to play. Going to play out on that left-hand side as a winger, which, to be honest, is a great role for Zach. Shame he can't cross, but everything else is very, very solid for this level. And when I look at this team, this is a team that should be getting promoted. I'm a little bit concerned, perhaps, about the balance of our centre mid setup. That's something that we can evaluate and maybe change as the season goes on. Up top, we are going with the Lord. Yes, that's right. We're calling him the Lord, Carl. I believe it's meant to be said Thacker. But I don't want to say his name like that because YouTube's automatic censoring thing will think I'm swearing and then I can't put ads on this video. So we're just going to call him the Lord. He's Lord Farquad. He starts up top alongside him, Lebret Mabulu, hoping he doesn't break his back again. Please, thank you. Of course, going into last season, we were predicted to get promoted and at the very least make the playoffs. This year, we're predicted to win everything. And when I look at our team and the quality we brought in, as well as the quality we already had... I think this is a team that can get out of this division at the first time of asking. I feel like the gap in uh, team between Tier 7 and Tier 8 isn't the largest. And with that in mind, I'm hoping we can take a little bit of momentum from last season into this first game of this year. Get off to a good start. We've got two games after this that are very, very winnable. Hopefully, we'll be sitting pretty come the end of this episode. Or maybe this is going to age really horrifically in the next 20 minutes. Hopefully, it's going to start well and... Uh, We'll take that, won't we? Tejera coming into the team today because of injury, putting a great ball into the box, and Merry is taking him less than three minutes to make his impact. Did have a couple of people mention Will Merry, the former Southampton youngster, um, as someone that they've used in FM, apparently in League Two. So maybe your Will Merry was better than my Will Merry, but based on this, maybe he is a League Two player. We have just got off to the best possible start. Apparently, it was a close offside. It, it wasn't a close offside. Cox on the far side, throwing it to Tejera. Of course, the last goal came from a throw-in. Maybe this one can come from the same situation. Law Farquad can't get on the end of that one, and it's now with Chamberlain looking to switch it over to this far side. With the way that we're playing with the wingers higher up the pitch, albeit on a support duty, kind of interested to see how we deal with teams that maybe double up in the wide areas and have wing backs that overlap. I feel like this year there's going to be a little bit of tank tactical tinkering needed as we find our feet. And well, oh my word, Williams, I want to blame for that because he missed a header. That finish is outrageous. That was so dirty, maybe I need to take a bath after it. And uh, well, it was scored by a bath. Um, what happened here? I mean, Jones puts it forward. Williams 
I, I think he was just trying to make it look like he had an effort. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. That is one of the best finishes I've seen all year in FM. It's not even hit the back of the net. It's hit the crossbar, gone over the line. If it was England at a World Cup and it was Lambard hitting it, it's not given. Fortunately, the linesmen in the eighth tier of England are better when it comes to judging if a ball's crossed the line. I'm not bitter. I'm over that World Cup, I swear. I mean, we need to do some defending here. Okay, at least it's not Giroud in the box. As I said, overall, the World Cup, pain and hurt. There's nothing lingering with me. I'm A-OK. -okay. Stay strong, Jack. Stay strong. So far in this game, it feels like we're trying to play some nice football and then they just hoof it every so often. And well, Noah Labret Mabulu, I feel like we need a nickname for him. He's going to play it inside to Lord Farquaad, who scores an LBM. Du -du 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 -du. An LBM. Du -du -du -du. That, is that going to catch on as a chant for Noah Labret Mabulu? An LBM. It's quite catchy, isn't it? Answers on a postcard. Maybe people can do better. Either way, he's got an assist to Lord Farquaad, who smashes it in. Just as a reminder, Kyle, a uh, lovely lord of a striker, wants to leave the club at the end of his contract at the moment. We have to convince him to stay. If we can keep putting goals on a plate for him, maybe he'll change his mind. Anyway, Dylan Crow inside to Pasol. Merry's there. The Lord's there. It's 2-1. 3-1. I've lost count. What's happening? Look, I'll admit it. It's been a long pre-season without any matches. I'm, I'm rusty as a commentator. That's my excuse. It's been three months since the last game. Osborne, Tajera. Surely we're not getting another. It's Merry causing all kinds of problems again. Cutting inside. And oh my word, NLBM. It's just hammered it. I mean, what do you say? He's worth the £20,000 work permit. That's what I'm going to say. Did Mary get the assist there? I don't know if Mary should get the assist. Back to goal, turns his man and then just pulls the trigger. Keeper can't react. It's 4-1 after 23 minutes. Mary picks it up, goes wide to Dylan Crow. Lovely build-up play here. Look at this liquid football. Will Mary's not that fast, though. He won't get to that. Jones goes long, but Pasal mops it up. Osborne looking for these direct passes. Osborne picks it up. Have a go, the number eight. Oh, my God, what is happening? What is happening? I've, I've lost my mind. Charlie Osborne, welcome to the club. He signed a three-year deal. Um, yeah, I mean, he's wearing the number eight. And many good centre mids wearing the number eight shirt have scored goals like this over the year. It's, it's gone in off the post. What is happening? It's 5-1. We've not played 25 minutes. I mean, if they go up the other end and score one now, it's going to be incredible. Baff's there, heads it, it's it's 5-2. I've got to edit this video down of a triple header into like 25 minutes. Pray for me. Plymouth with a throw in on the far side. I mean, we're three goals to the good. We should be cruising, but they've taken the chances that have come their way. I'm scared to get too carried away here. Palfrey floats it in. This headed, it's it's 5-3. What's happening here? I'm trying to remain calm. It's quite difficult. I'm grateful for the fact we've not had a goal in five minutes. Headed away as far as Osborne. I mean, shoot from there, lads. You've already shown that you've got the range for it. Merry heads it inside. Lord Farquad picks up, lays it to Tajera. It's, what? what is the score? I've lost count. It's 6-3. It's 6-3. Tajera's now on the score sheet. There's, a, there's another highlight. What's happening? There's a throw in on the far side. We've scored from one of these already. They've dealt with it initially, although I back Purcell to win that header, and indeed he has. Tajera now has it. Tries to pick out Atkinson. There's a mix-up at the back. It's half cleared away. Only as far as Merry, who's having a gold, good old time on the, the near side. Osborne wins his header. Lord Farquad turns his man, hits it. It's 7-3 and it's not even half time. This might be the most insane game of football manager I'm going to play all year. Or maybe it's just there's not going to be any more goals in the second half. What has happened in this game? There's another highlight. There's 10 seconds left to the half. I can't deal with a whole season like this. I can't handle it. It's 7-4. It's it's the 48th minute. What's happening? <laughs> okay, it's half time. We've had 11 goals. That's not a sentence I thought I was ever going to say. What do you tell the players at half time? I guess I just say I'm happy. I'm having fun. That's the main thing. I have just realised Kyle got a hat trick with his goal right before half time. Didn't even realise that at the time. He's now going to maybe be looking for the double hat trick. He's gone down in a heap. He's appealing for it. I respect the audacity of it. Unfortunately, not given. Osborne, though, is going to play him through. Is he onside? He scored it. Is he onside? I think... It, no, he's not onside, is he? He's offside. I thought he was about to get his fourth. Still waiting for our first goal of this second half. The standard was set far too high early on, although maybe a chance here. As MLBM takes it down and is hacked down, Kingsley Wellins, who's already on a booking, has hacked him down. It's 11 goals and a red card. What a crazy day today's been.
15 minutes left. Feel like we should probably just make a sub or two. I'm going to bring in Livingston out on the right hand side and move Merry out onto the left. Elsewhere, Williams is on a booking. Reggie Evans on your come. And you know what? We'll, we'll save a sub just in case. I want to believe there could be more to happen for them or for us. It's Motruk with the ball going wide, lays it inside to Bath. Uh, it's 7 5. Four minutes of added time. I feel like I've had 45 minutes to chill out, despite there being a goal and a red card. Compared to what preceded it, it was a rather chilled out game. It finishes here. Plymouth Parkway 5, Guernsey 7. I mean, if you put a bet on that pre-game, congrats. You, you're probably a millionaire right now. Maybe we've got a little bit to work on defensively, but if we just score 7 every game, we're probably going to win every match this year, I think. Spare a thought for our next opposition, as well as editing Jack that's got to try and piece together that last game. Hendon just lost 3-0 to start the year. They're rock bottom. I have no idea how many goals we're going to get, but I'm excited to find out. We take them on in a week's time. I'll see you there. Wasn't expecting quite such an event for week this week between games, but a couple of bits of news. First and foremost, the Lord has signed a new contract. Not a small contract, but a two-year deal. £250 a week. There is a one-year extension to his contract if we get promoted in those next two years. He does also get a big bonus if he's top goal scorer in the league. Um, given the fact he just got a hat-trick, there's a reasonable chance he's going to achieve that. If he does, I owe him £5,000. You might have also noticed a director of football, Luke Shearer, one of a few new staff members I've signed in the last week. Um, this man, 30 years old, a good little director of football available for really, really cheap wages. I had been looking for a director of football for the last few years, but every single one that I looked at that was half decent wanted thousands of pounds because I guess directors of football get paid a lot. Luke Shearer doesn't know his own worth, where his first job since he retired from Nuneet and Borough and uh, yeah I think he's a good little staff addition to the team. He wasn't the only new addition though we picked up Ian Johnson who is just a fitness coach not the best not the worst just the best we could afford and I suppose a similar logic applies to Lewis Thompson. Last year we didn't have a goalkeeping coach all year I've actually got one in now and the last of the new additions a new physio Miles Warren 14 physiotherapy that might come in useful if our players were to I don't know break their back or something and if you thought the new addition stopped there they don't. I've signed Jack. Yeah, that's right. The Jack Alliance. It's real, it turns out. Jack Bycroft has joined us. 22 years old. Phenomenal goalkeeper for this level. You can see, expected to be good enough for the league above us. He enjoys big matches. He is a consistent performer. At 22 years old, he's not coming for cheap, but he's undeniably a big upgrade uh, on Mackenzie Lyle, who was our current goalkeeper. It was really the last position I wanted to address this season. Now that we've ticked that off, hopefully we're not going to concede four goals today. So Hendon got hammered 3-0 in their previous game. With that in mind, hoping we can, well, add a bit more misery to their start to the season. In terms of team news, it is pretty much the same team as last game. Nolan is still suspended. Vaughan is still coming back from his broken foot. Elsewhere, uh, well, Jack, the only change. He comes in in goal. Hopefully, he's going to be able to make a stop or two. A clean sheet to start today would be nice. Was tempted to maybe change some things to try and balance us out a little bit more. Maybe do some of that defending malarkey, but you know what? That would be boring. So we're sticking with the, the tactic that got us 11 goals. Not sure we're going to get the same number today. This is, of course, our first home game of the season. Hoping that attendances are going to be up this year because we're spending a lot more on wages and I need seats to be filled and tickets to be sold to compensate for that. If Carl could get a goal here, maybe more people will start turning up. It's his fourth goal of the season. Every time he scores, I'm going to think about his top goal scorer bonus that I'm going to have to pay him. I mean, it's a good goal. It's a great finish. It's 1-0. It's the best possible start. A bit slow to get going today. Took 10 minutes to find a breakthrough. I'll tell you what, Vaughan might struggle to get back into the team, though, because Tejera is running the show from deep. I mean, would it be treacherous to just not bring Vaughan back into the team? I bigged him up as the first coming of Christ, but suddenly he feels kind of average in our team. That, that is blasphemous, isn't it? I shouldn't say that about Vaughan. I mean, with Tejera winning the ball like he has done there, though, maybe I will say it louder because I feel like Tejera is just surpassing all expectations at the moment we'll keep a close eye on him I mean look, it's early days he's played less than two matches for us and I'm getting carried away talking down Vaughan that said we need to do some defending here and well Atkinson has won the ball Atkinson was a little bit quiet last game on the left hand side but with play like that he might make a name for himself that should have been two so far in this game it has been all one-way traffic and that is not a good goal kick it is MLBM bringing the ball forward Merry plays it inside MLBM is there he scores I thought he might have been offside but actually 
was going to say, I think he's timed his run to perfection. Nope, my gut instinct was correct. The flag is raised. It was offside. And I mean, I'll tell you what. I want to see that. I want to see another angle for though. I don't think the lines were drawn in the right place there. Last time they had a goal kick, we scored straight from it. We've won the header this time through Williams. It's now with Kyle. He's going to lay it wide to Merry. Will Merry is having fun, isn't he, on the far side? And well, you can tell he's having fun because he's had a shot there. And if it wasn't for the fact he played so well last game, I'd be more annoyed about him shooting from there because that was silly. It's been a very one-sided game so far in this half, but there's still plenty of time for Hendon to come back. And as long as it remains a one-goal game, that threat looms. But a goal here, I'll tell you what, Charlie Osborne's did it twice in two games. Could ease those nerves a little is what I was about to say. With that, we make it a two-goal deficit. Charlie Osborne has scored two goals of the season, contenders, in the first two matches. I mean, to be fair, I think in... The first game, he had about five goal of the season contenders. Add that one to the collection. Osborne from range picks out the top corner, scores it, and that does make it 2-0. Now I can relax a little. Ten minutes left of the half. The only two shots on target we've had have ended up in the back of the net, which I suppose makes us a clinical side. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind a third. Merry, don't shoot from range this time. Try and get closer, mate. He's going to try and get closer. He shoots, it's blocked, pulling collects. And uh, is, that, is that the highlight, that block shot? That can't be the highlight. There's got to be more to this football manager. You're not trolling me, right? Tejera, Pasal, Cox, dinks it. MLBM was under it, but didn't try to get there. Probably worried about getting injured, isn't he? To be fair, I'm worried about him getting injured. Can we wrap him up in bubble wrap on the pitch? Is there any rules in the rules of football against wrapping players in bubble wrap? Because it might well be needed. Tejera, Atkinson, I'll tell you what, he might need wrapping up. He's on a little knock. MLBN playing it forward, tucks it away, and that is, that's an outrageous finish, isn't it? That's 3-0, that is a ridiculous solo goal. This man was playing in Liga two years ago. Yeah, it was a sub-appearance, and he only played once for Ren. He was playing in Liga two years ago. Now he's playing against these amateurs, and I mean, the number 10 cuts inside, and then just squeezes it in the far post. He's far too good, isn't he? Half-time in this game, we're 3-0 up. They've not had a shot on target. Yeah, it's been one-sided. Atkinson still carrying that knock. I'm wondering if I should just take him off and play it safe. I might do it after this. Probably needless to risk him in this game. MLBM is going to keep it alive. Osborne's there, heads it from range. And I mean, if you score a header from outside the box, that is ridiculous. On this occasion, Pullen has actually managed to stop the ball. Is that his first shot on target that he stopped all game? It is. I don't want to judge their goalkeeper, but he's not wowed me in this game here. He might even be tested further because Atkinson is making it down the wing on this far side. Dinks it to Tejera. Have a go, Tejera. Why not? Osborne, you have a go. You've already scored two. I didn't actually mean it. What is this man made of? Charlie Osborne has scored again. And I don't know what to say. I've, I'm lost for words two matches in a row. This is silly. Every time he gets the ball, I'm just going to start shouting, shoot. Tejera lays it across Osborne and goes, you know what, Gaffer? Yeah, I'll have a go. Why not? To be fair, it was actually a good attempt to block by the defender, but it didn't stop it finding the top corner. It's 4-0. Going to bring in Kai Livingston, move Merry out onto that left-hand side. He's obviously, he's right-footed. He's not right-only footed, um, but he can only play this position to an accomplished level, which I guess is the same as how he plays on the right. Kind of interested to see how he fares on either side. And uh, well, yeah, with Merry moving out onto the left, that makes Livingston's job a little bit easier because he's a lot more one-dimensional. Uh, Pasal is on a booking. I'm going to take him off for Reggie Evans, just continuing to give Evans some first team minutes because he's a player we might call upon this year when suspensions or injuries happen at the back. And whilst Osborne's on a book in, he's on for a hat trick from centre mid. So I have to keep him on. Osborne with the ball, dinking it forward towards Carl, who's going to get there. Could get his second of the game here. Defender is back. Oh my word, he's tried to chip the keeper. It's hit the crossbar and bounced away to safety. Would like to pass a congratulations to Hendon. They've had their first shot of the game. Round of applause. I probably deserve to concede now I've said that. Just a few minutes left here. This has been a one-sided game. Hendon, I, I think we're predicted to finish towards the bottom of the league at the start of the year. Their start to the season isn't very good. They lost 3-0 previously. They've lost 4-0 here. And to be honest, it was never really in doubt. And Charlie Osborne, unsurprisingly, has picked up man of the match. He does have nine long shots, to be fair. Not sure how that justifies the goals he scored so far this season. A nice victory. Well done. Everyone is happy as Larry. And that is good news because we've still got one more game to play today. It's another away game. And that fixture is going to be against Harrow Borough. They are down in 16th. They have not had a good start to the season. They've lost one. They've drawn one. Media prediction was 15th. So they're 
the kind of team that we probably should be winning. But away from home, it's never going to be easy. That said, we've got a week to prepare. Don't go anywhere. When we return, more goals, probably. I can't guarantee more goals, but it, it feels quite likely right now. Two Jack does an away days in one video. Go on then. Today we're taking on Harrow. They are one of the most easternly teams that we are going to play this season. Uh, I've just lost the pitch. Where, where do they play? So Harrow is part of North West London. So a long away day for us this one. One of the furthest games we'll have, I think, all year long. In terms of the stadium, here it is in all its glory. Bad news. Um, I can't get a good view of the pitch. Good news, though, I found the front door of the stadium next to this lovely garage. If we peer through the gates, there is Harrow Borough FC. Very good signage. Very modern. That looks new, doesn't it? Definitely new. And you know they're a big-time football club because they've got an overflow car park. That, is, that means you're a big team. I'll tell you what, Jack's away days are getting more high-tech than ever. I'm on Google Earth because the pitch has been... Kind of mapped out in 3D. Look at this. We could look at the, the stand. It's, it's beautiful. Now, I don't know how many away days we can actually do this for, but Google Earth's bloody neat, isn't it? Look at this. Just 3D panning views of Earlsmead Stadium. Don't think we're going to be able to do this for many of the games, but because this team is close enough to London, they do actually have all the, the fancy 3D stuff. I feel like I'm there. Now that we've finished pushing the technical limits of mankind, let's go back to Football Manager. Sticking with the system, minor change in the team. Nolan coming back in for Cameron Cox. Nolan, of course, 18 years old, has a brighter future ahead of him. I think when you compare the two players, they're not a million miles away from one another in terms of overall ability. Obviously, both can play either side. They may well find themselves battling it out, these two, for their fullback position this year. Keep an eye on this one. Don't think it's as clear-cut as maybe I figured it was when I was first signing Cox. Besides that, though, unfortunately, Vaughan still coming back from his broken foot. Failed a fitness test, still up to a week away from being fully fit. Besides that, though, no real reason to rotate things around in the team, much to the dismay of Shatayo, who's unhappy, and also Tyler Forbes, who has told me he's leaving at the end of his contract, which does hurt me a little bit because I want to keep him around. Let me know what you do. Do you be kind? Do you just... Cut him off and make him realise he's sixth choice striker. I feel like I'm too sentimental. After the previous two games, I'm expecting a load of goals here today, but whether or not we can quite maintain the 11 goals in two games we've scored to start this year, as I suppose remains to be seen. That said, could be a chance here. Dylan Crow free kick, put in, Atkinson headers it just over the bar. Haraburra have definitely been putting up more of a fight than we experienced against Hendon. We're yet to have a shot on target. They've had some chances of their own, but truth be told, this game has been bogged down a lot more in the midfield. It's been a 4-4-2 a versus 4-2-4 affair. Maybe a breakthrough here, though, as Nolan crunches it against the crossbar and it goes out for a goal kick. I want to be happy. I want to be optimistic. We've not had a shot on target in that game, so you know what? I'm going to get shouty, shouty. Our play here, going to change some stuff up. In the final third, Kyle's been poor today. I'm hoping he's not just signed a new contract and is now going to rob us blind. I'm going to move Will Murray into the attacking third and see how he gets on. Elsewhere, NLBM is going to come off for Shatayo. Shatayo yet to make an appearance so far this season. When our strikers have been in as good as form as they have been, it's kind of difficult to justify subbing them off or dropping them for games. But you know what? The time is now for Shatayo. And uh, I think I have settled on NLBM as just a nickname for Noah. Le uh, his name's too. What is his name? No Noah. Noah Lebret Mabulu. NLBM is just better. Can we all agree on that? NLBM. Good name. Tajera wins the ball there, kicks it towards uh, Lord Farquaad, but he's not won it. Of course, we're about to take off both our strikers. Would be very typical FM if we score a goal now, and for a second I thought Mary's ball was going to find its way through. Still might have a chance here. Mary, cross is deflected, goes just over, and with an hour played, that's the best chance we've had so far in this second half. We have been lacking quality. Going to get a shouty shout of demand more. With 20 minutes left, we're edging out possession. We've had double the number of shots of them. We just need to find the target a little bit more. Let's try and work the ball into the box. I want us to be more direct and kind of quicker with our passing. Let's focus on getting into the wide areas and looking for overlaps. Adding a few more instructions, complicating it perhaps. Of course, with us looking for overlaps, with us maybe trying to get the ball forward quicker, we may leave ourselves open at the back. And Nolan's defensive header there is not the best. Copping has an effort, 
And Jack Bycroft, that might be the first save I've seen him make since he joined us. It's taken him <laughs> almost two matches. He kept a clean sheet in the last game. We've not really sung his praises about that. He could end up keeping another one here. Or maybe I've just jinxed him horrifically. There's a late goal on offer, perhaps, for one of these two teams. Dylan Crow plays it towards Merry. Keepers in no man's land. And Merry was offside. It wouldn't have counted even if he had scored. Very typical FM. You score 11 goals <laughs> in two games. And then you draw nil, nil. But given the fact it was an away from home game, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. It was actually a really, really even game. They had a couple of chances late on that we didn't really see that contributed massively to their XG. It was a good defensive performance. Just a shame about the whole going forward thing. I was hoping we were going to be towards the top of the table to end today's episode. Seven points from three games, especially with two games being away from home, is nothing to scoff at. A good start that I think we can build on. We've not quite yet experienced the onslaught of cup games that we had to start last season, although it is very much looming on the horizon. With that in mind, not entirely sure when we're going to be back next time. We'll see what competitions we're still in, what fixtures get thrown up. But with a focus on the league this year, I want to get promoted. The cup's probably just a little bit of a distraction, truth be told. Besides that, have a lovely rest of your Monday. I will see you guys next time tomorrow, same time and place for more Arc to Prem action. Until then, it is me, Jack. And I'll see you in a bit. I'm out.